But on these days, I was like, you know what? I, I don't really feel like I, I need to take this break. That's all that I know. Foot on the gas. 155 on the road. You can be a friend of me, an enemy. Keep that same old energy. Cause I know. I'm in my element. Ooh, yeah. I'm in my element. Ooh, yeah. I'm in my element. Element. I'm in my element. Ooh, yeah. I'm in my element. What's up, everybody? Troy Ryan, and this is the Thunder Channel on nootropics, on testosterone, and on male performance. Please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of all our future content. I probably got about 15 bottles left uh, to sell uh, Torque at 30% off. Coupon code is 30Torque. That'll be over literally later on today. So if you're watching this video and want to try Torque, go get it cheap now. All right, friends. So I took Alcar. Some of you know this because I've been talking about it in the live streams, and I've kind of mentioned it over the course of the last like many months that I've been dosing Alcar frequently every day for 180 days. It's six straight months of me taking acetyl L-carnitine. And I want to explain kind of how it affected me in memory, episodic memory, reference memory, processing, computing power, verbal fluency, energy at nighttime, all these things that I noticed, and especially when I came off of it, what I noticed. So stick around. But first, let's talk about acetyl L-carnitine. Um, it's an energy optimizing nootropic that will help you in sort of a pulsatile type of manner to synthesize more acetylcholine. I think the mechanism for that is it's like uh, facilitating the transfer of acetyl groups across mitochondrial membranes. Increasing the availability in the cytoplasm of acetyl-CoA, which is going to make you synthesize more acetylcholine. Otherwise, it can be oxidized to produce energy in brain cells and aids in the process of fat transport into mitochondria for energy production. It'll help you through chronic use express nerve growth factor, which is a reparative protein in your brain, very useful to kind of have around. And with chronic use can remove a substance of toxic buildup in your brain called lipofuscin. I've seen people take it in all kinds of forms. I'm, I'm taking it or I was taking it in this particular stint in just acetyl L-carnitine. But I've seen people like Vigorous Steve take injectable L-carnitine and get really, really interesting results due to higher bioabsorbability, which is really interesting. But L-car in and of itself, very, very powerful nootropic. All right, so that's what it does. Dose range is 200 to 1,000 milligrams, and my dose in this 180-day stint was 400 milligrams a day. All right, so here's my experience. Um, and I also want to sort of say that uh, during the time that I was dosing it initially in the first month, month or so, I scaled back on the rest of the nootropics that I was taking just so I could see like what the prominent effect of Alcar was. So what I noticed was like typical Alcar energy, because I'm no stranger to that. I've taken Alcar many times over the years, just not very consistently. I noticed uh, a better ability to like reference information in my head when I was either speaking to people, which leads to verbal fluency, or when I was doing anything related to scientific research where I had to maybe reference other things that I may have read. And I like, remember in my head some of the keywords for those studies to Google to pull up those pieces of literature. My verbal fluency was better. My memory was better. My general energy was better. All right, so month two on this 180 day stint, I noticed like all these things were still there, but it, it seemed a little less prominent. I remember actually thinking to myself like, huh, like did I build a tolerance to this? Should I up the dose? Am I just used to it? So if I remove it, like maybe my brain will start functioning less than optimal again. But that's what I did. For two days, I removed the Alcar and therein is where I actually noticed at that point what, what it was doing. Like I was less verbally fluent. In the morning time when I would dose it, like I had a little less energy energy, need a little more coffee. And I noticed that, you know, like my focus on things was just, I mean, it was still fine, but like not as good as it was on Alcar. And this makes an important point. So obviously thereafter I brought it back in, continue the regimen, but it makes an important point that some nootropics, you will start to notice that you may not notice them, but if you remove them from the mix, you're going to notice the, 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 the void that they were filling, right? The performance benefit that they were giving you. All right. So bringing it back in, I took Alcar there thereafter for the next, uh, what is it? Four months or something every day. So seven days a week, didn't take a break. Uh, I was 400 milligrams a day without fail. Now I broke down some of these benefits in a line item list. So I'm going to list those things off for you. Number one, uh, I had more days where I didn't feel the necessity to take other nootropic stacks, which I thought was really cool. Like in the morning time when I'm you know, executing work and productivity stuff, I, I needed less nootropics. Usually, uh, especially for doing research on content and research otherwise, which is like, I don't know, a big part of my life is research. I take racetams for that, right? Aniracetam, oxyracetam, low dose primaracetam, and this stuff just helps. So I, I noticed with Alcar in the mix, there were more days where I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't really think I need the Rasatam today. That's pretty interesting. Number two, I eventually got to the point where I realized that I 
was overdoing caffeine and not necessarily for me just with Alcar in the mix in terms of stimulation I needed less coffee right I was getting a little jittery a little weird I had to reduce my coffee from like one big giant cup to like a regular cup of coffee which is totally fine and balance things back out number three I noticed uh, on the days when I did take nootropics that the stimulation was either a little bit more noticeable or in some cases with things like uridine a lot more noticeable so it potentiated the stimulant effect of other nootropics and then the nootropics that I was taking that were improving processing power also noticed an improvement in that above just that separate nootropics that like having the alcohol in the mix just made everything better number four and this is kind of an interesting one um you know I, I like everybody else get a dip in energy throughout the day like it usually hits around 12 p.m i notice in some cases no dip in energy in other cases, uh, less of a dip of energy. Whereas usually I'd get up, like fucking meditate or something, stretch, walk around, hang out with my cats or whatever, maybe take a walk. But on these days, I was like, you know what? I, I don't really feel like I, I need to take this break. Brain's still in a great place, so wanted to keep working. Number five, I noticed that at nighttime, I had a little bit extra energy to do nighttime productivity. We've talked about this before. It's really important to be productive at night and there's things you can facilitate doing that. Sometimes it's just that 10 to 15% extra energy that you do or don't have that makes or breaks whether or not you're going to be productive at nighttime. So yeah, I noticed taking out car daily, like at nighttime, it'd be like 6, 7 p.m. or something after dinner. I'd be like in that phase where I'm like, hmm, what am I going to do? Like, I feel like being productive, like I have a little bit more energy. Let's execute some work. Number six, and this is a really cool benefit of for me taking out car every day for six months. I noticed my writing is better. I write a lot. So first of all, I journal everything, like everything that I read on papers that may be relevant to me or a client, I journal it and then, you know, cite the source. But I also, uh, you know, journal and I highly, highly encourage everybody else to journal because you're going to have a lot more understanding of what you're doing and what affected what. Everything I'm doing relating to my body, right? Any new nootropic that I brought in, any change in my testosterone regimen, whatever I do, it gets journaled. And I notice my ability to write when I'm doing that is a lot better. And lastly, number seven, as you might expect to happen in this particular particular case, I noticed that when I was taking racetams, I needed a little less city choline. City choline is my choline source of choice. Very rarely these days do I dose alpha GPC. I just like CDP choline and the catecholaminergic dopamine neuroadrenaline release that comes from it. But like when I would take, you know, racetams, which yeah, I'm one of those people that I do need a little bit of choline intake when I'm using racetams, not a ton, just a little bit. You know, instead of dosing 70 milligrams, call it a city choline, I could dose like 45, 50 and be fine. Now that's just me. A lot of people are going to need to dose 100, 150 milligrams or whatever of the choline source. It depends largely on your body weight and sometimes other factors. But I, I, I markedly lowered my choline dose. Like I, I had to take less of it because I was getting a little lethargic taking Rastams. Like, huh, this got to be a choline mismatch. Reduce the choline just a little bit, solve the issue. That happened because, again, of this like acetyl-CoA choline acetyltransferase transition to the production of acetylcholine that Alcar is aiding in. And that's basically it, okay? No changes in sex drive. I mean, I'm doing a bunch of other things related to that, so I really can't kind of even go into that department on how it affected me. Largely beneficial, no side effects for me, again, except for had to reduce my choline dose and in some cases reduce my caffeine dose. And overall, it was a very good experience. There's a lot of literature supporting the uh, expression of nerve growth factor and the removal of sort of toxic substances, especially lipofuscin in your brain. The more you use Alcar, so I imagine that stuff happened. No way to quantify it, so who the hell knows? But overall, it's like the only reason I stopped taking it is because I take torque all the time, right? And torque has Alcar in it. So it's like doubling up on it. I make it a little anxious or be over stimulated or whatever. Otherwise, I would be taking it every day still. And so Alcar is one of the many nootropics that I've learned can be taken for most people every day. So as long as your gut is in a great place, I know people are concerned about TMAO and uh, its ability through choline really to feed a particularly toxic uh, gut bacteria or byproduct of gut bacteria, TMAO. I've really never seen that be an issue in real life for the record. I mean, there's a few studies on it, but no weird issue with me. Cardiac markers are fine. I actually get um, organ imaging and test all the blood somewhat regularly. Caveats. Some people via the extra synthesis of brain acetylcholine are going to have a, a little degree of anxiety when taking Alcar, depending on your dose. Now, it should be some kind of dose dependent. If you can't manage the dose in a way which reduces anxiety, if you get it from taking Alcar, your best bet is just to dose 100 to 200 milligrams of L-theanine, which should resolve the issue. For some people, the extra choline synthesis is going to make them edgy. Now, this is something that's very prominent in the nootropic community. People are like, I'm fucking performing super awesomely, but I'm like a little mad at people. <laughs> I'm, mad at, I'm mad at slow people. That's what happens to me. My brain's working at a level where I'm just, I don't, 
have tolerance to deal with folks who are moving like slower than me. And while, yeah, you could be dosing GABAergics in low doses or serotonin system modulators to optimize those, you know, respective systems to provide a little more control over the excitatory neurotransmission that's happening in the case of having more acetylcholine and energy. Or you could just realize that like, you know, having a little edginess, but you're also performing really, really well is kind of a trade-off that you might have to deal with. Like, it's totally okay. People sometimes think like, oh, well, I got this negative effect, but I was wildly productive, but I'm a little edgy like, hey man, there's a trade-off sometimes when using nootropics. Lastly, if you take Alcar too late in the day, like 5, 6 p.m., it definitely can disrupt your sleep. And I think this is related to the acetylcholine concentrations, generally the energy. I mean, if you're in a sympathetically dominant state later in the day, it certainly has the ability to kind of maybe increase heart rate, put you in a place where it's a tad jittery, or your brain is just working better than usual, and so it could disrupt your sleep. So just be aware of that. I was taking Alcar in the morning, every one of those 180 days, like right after coffee. If you're going to, you know, do this, like it just as a, as an experiment to see even for a month, like if you're performing better above baseline in all these functional areas, then I would suggest starting with 200 milligrams. If you're not used to taking Alcar, see how you fare. You can move all the way up to a gram if you need to, some people more, but if you don't have to, don't. Just get to a place where you're functioning really awesomely, you notice better verbal recall, memory, writing capacity, where cerebrally intensive tasks are easier. That has been my experience with acetyl L-carnitine. Look, I've been talking about it for years. It's one of the most powerful nootropics out there. It's easy to get. It's just like, it's a super nootropic in, in its own right. And it's one of my top like 15 nootropics like in the world. Pleasure being with you. Uh, as I said in the beginning, yeah, we've only got like 15 or I think it's 18 last time I checked bottles of torque to sell 30% off. So our loss is your gain. This will be over literally today, if not very early tomorrow. 30% uh, off coupon code is 30 torque. Torque has Alcar in it and a bunch of other nootropic goodies that'll turn your brain on very quickly. Get it in the description of this video. Secondarily, the Cortex stack. I mean, this is motivation and that kind of brain energy to want to do stuff predominantly. When you take Cortex, you're going to be like, wow, I don't feel like this normally. I want to get things done. I'm more verbally fluent. My memory's better. Like, it's just awesome. You can get Cortex in the description of this video or at livecortex.com. Lastly, if you need to hire me for formulating nootropic stacks, helping you figure out your energy problems, getting on TRT, dialing in your TRT protocol, whether or not you need to be using an AI, that's been like you know, a huge topic. I've been getting bombarded with requests about that. For some guys, the answer is yes. Anyway, you can hire me for calls. We even run, recently launched a targeted email response console. You don't have to get on a call. You send your, your information, your situation, your bloods if you have them and I will respond with protocols via email. You know the stuff livecortex.com pleasure being with you my friend. So much more content to come soon and I will see you on the other side. Yeah, I'm on my element. Element, element. I'm on my element. Yeah, I'm on my element.